Manchester City for Crystal Palace 2. And it was a brilliant lunchtime kickoff. Great goals, wonderful play, drama, controversy, everything that I think epitomizes what the Premier League is all about. Some of it good, some of it bad, but it certainly adds to the conversation. There's lots to unpack about this game. Of course, you see Man City now sitting second in the Premier League table, joint on points with Liverpool, two goals behind on goal difference. Lots of pressure now on Liverpool Football Club tomorrow when they take on Man United. If they lose, and if they were to lose by more than a couple of goals, that would give a big advantage to City. Pressure on Arsenal now. Big pressure on Arsenal. They have to win. They don't want to lose any more, lose any ground at all. So it makes that 5.30 kickoff today even more epic. I want to talk about today's game though, and and it's it's a real it's a real it's a real hard one to break down because you will watch that second half and you'll say Manchester City absolutely categorically deserved to win, and I I would totally understand that. My problem is, and I have to be fair and I have to be consistent. We saw two penalties Thursday night conceded by Man United, minimal contact on both, but still fouls because Kukurea was impeded and Madueke was impeded. Minimalistic contact, both checked by VAR. You could see the minimal contact, but nothing overturned. At the end, at the end of that second half, which was first half, sorry, which was at 1-1, we saw a brilliant ball delivered into the box. And what we saw was Guardiola smash he grabbed hold of first, and then he smashed through the back of the Crystal Palace player. Absolutely through his back. And I forget now whether it was uh, Eze or, or um, uh, Ayu. But he smashes through his back, taking him out. This is a clear penalty. If a slight trip, if, if the other night, the low trips slightly nudges into the side of Madueke, if that's a penalty when a player falls over, lightly touches the side of a of an attacker and he and the attacker falls down, how is it not a penalty when you grab hold of someone and put your whole body weight through them so you could win a header? For me, I'm absolutely flabbergasted again at the officiating. Now I'm gonna say this: it's not on Manchester City. City haven't paid the referees. I don't believe it's corruption. I don't believe City have paid the refs. I don't believe there's brown envelopes. I believe this is the incompetence of our referees that have robbed Palace again. But it's twice now, absolutely twice in the space of a few weeks of football, where City have got away with not conceding penalties. First of all, there was Doku studding McAllister in the chest right at the death of the game. That should have led, in my personal opinion, to a penalty to Liverpool, they could have won that game. That would be two points more to Liverpool, which puts them cl clear of City. And it's one point less for Manchester City in, in terms of that column. The same today. Today's situation is slightly different because the second half, look, City were absolutely majestic. But we saw at the end a goal back for, for Crystal Palace. Why? Because momentum. City went 4-1 up. They took their foot off the gas. Momentum is an important part of football. If that second half starts at 2-1 to Crystal Palace, we have no idea how that game would have gone. And I am really getting frustrated at the inconsistencies in, in the Premier League and from these referees, which is robbing teams of opportunities to win games, get draws, gain points, finish further in, up the league table, potentially even win the Premier League. But as fans, we're also being robbed of the opportunity to see these games play out how they should. And it is highly frustrating. And look, City fans will say it's because I've got a City agenda, but go back to your first game against Liverpool this year. I condemned the, the distant, when your second goal was disallowed and I was on your side for that instant, instance. So there is no change in my mood. There is no change in my agenda. It's not about City. It's not about Liverpool. It's not about Arsenal. 
It's a it's all about the consistency. You cannot concede see Man United concede two penalties midweek for minimal contact and then have um Guardiola smash through the back of a Crystal Palace player and not concede a penalty. I understand that City fans will see this as an attack on their club, so they're going to defend it. Of course, they're going to say no penalty. But if it was the other way around, okay, in your next game, if you're losing, if you're drawing, you and, and that happens and you don't get a penalty, you will be fuming. I, by the way, will defend your club in that scenario because this is about getting the right refereeing decisions. I'm not too sure about the consistency for most other football fans, but I do think that Palace were robbed of an opportunity here. Momentum is a key fundamental factor of, fo of football without a shadow of a doubt. Crystal Palace take the lead again. Who knows what that does to the psyche of City? Who knows what that does to the mentality of those Crystal Palace players? We saw a late goal from Palace. It could have been a much closer game. There's no doubt. I'm not saying City wouldn't have won, but I'm saying we didn't get to see the game. And this notion that referees shouldn't re-referee is an absolute, absolute... Um, sorry, I, I lost my train of thought. I read a weird comment from somebody. From my point of view, I am just sick to my back teeth of, of, of seeing this not play out. This is not about bitterness towards Manchester City. It's about football fans standing up and being absolutely honest with what is going on. And people here are saying Terry Goldbridge, but this is what's ridiculous about it. I don't know what Goldbridge has said, but if you, this is where you are all, everyone calling me out is being disingenuous. Because when I when Man United have been robbed, I've called it out. When City have been robbed this season, I called it out. When Liverpool have been robbed, I've called it out. When those teams, when each of those teams, like Man United, when we benefited first day of the season against Wolves, when we should have conceded a penalty, I called it out. When Liverpool have got away with them, I called them out. So let's not sit there. When Arsenal, okay, handballed it against Liverpool, Odegaard, I called it out. So let's not sit there and say that I have an agenda against a particular team when it comes to refereeing decisions. If you are to say that, you're a liar and you have no place in this debate for trying to save football from these disgusting refereeing decisions. As I've said, and I'll move back onto it now, the second half performance was, was nothing short of spectacular for, from Manchester City and namely KDB. And I want to speak about KDB for because I can see my brother Patrick is backstage. A lot. Well, Patrick wasn't the only City fan. A lot of City fans in the comments section agree with his view that he should predominantly now, predominantly be a bench player for Manchester City. Today, I think he demonstrated why that's an absolute madness. He is still a key, key component in this Manchester City team. I think without him on the field of play today, it would have been a very different end result. It was very difficult for City to break, break Crystal Palace down. It took a... A little bit of fortune. Grealish on the left. He tried his cross. It was blocked by two players. And it, it just happened to fall at the feet of KDB. He then whips in just a, an absolute sumptuous goal. And then after that, his timing of his run to set up ha Harlan was absolutely impeccable. And his, his second finish to really seal the game and, and, and end things was just majestic. He hit it as st straight as a die. Absolute bullet. And I said this back in October, November time, and I stand by it. KDB for me has moved up to being the second greatest, second best, whichever phrase you want to use, I don't care when it comes to this conversation, midfielder in Premier League history. And I absolutely categorically stand by that opinion. Paul Scholes is still number one in my view, but he goes above Lampard. He goes above Roy Keane. And although Roy Keane and Lampard, it, it's we're talking minimal between all these players. Roy Keane was a great, and as, as a Man United fan, I really want to put him higher. But KDB has footballing ability, output, leadership, longevity. He just has everything. And he has the trophies to boot with it. And I just think he is, again, I'm not putting him above Paul Scholes personally. And that's because Paul Scholes was just doing it at this level for as long as KDB has and more uh, up until he was 38 years of age. Different players in the sense of KDB plays a good, has played the majority of his career, a good sort of 20 yards further up the football pitch. But they're still midfield players. In terms of attacking midfield players in the Premier League, you've got to put KDB 
on the top of that list. You know, above Gerard, above Frank Lampard, 110%. There's no doubt about it whatsoever for me in that. And he just today demonstrated again, KDB, why he is the best midfielder of his generation in the Premier League. I don't know how City fans feel about this. This is more for you to crown, but I'll give an opinion on it. I really do feel like he's your greatest ever football player. I, I know David Silva's in the equ- in the equation. I know Summerby's in the equation. I know Aguero will be there. But I just think KDB is Manchester City's greatest ever football player without a shadow of a doubt. And it was almost Palace versus KDB today in terms of how important he was to get in that win. And I think as well, what I also took away from this game in this br- brilliant and beautiful title race is the strength and depth that City have with Silva being on the bench, Foden being on the bench, who's in fantastic form, their goal kick, by the way, Ortega, that touch. That touch after Rodri's mistake. My giddy gosh, was that sensational uh, to see. And it was a real, just a real little highlight of the game. It was beautiful. Maybe man like Don thinks people are going to turn up just to watch that. I don't know. But uh, if you haven't watched the squad, you're not going to get that joke. Uh, by the way, check out the squad. The podcast is out now. You can scan the QR code to check out the channel, but you'll see it there in the, li- in the live stream section. Or click on the link in our live description. And that'll take you directly through to the show. Overwhelmed by the by the positive feedback from it. So go and check that out at the end of the stream, please, people. Go and check out the squad. But yeah, as I say, there, there's so many great things today from City. I do feel they 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 were they, they deserve to probably win the game. But as I say earlier about that penalty decision, I think it's a stone waller based on other penalties that have been given this year. And as I say, I don't believe City are cheating. I don't believe they're paid referees. I don't believe it's corruption. I don't believe any of that. However, it should have been a penalty to Palace. It could then been been 2-1 at half time. The game could have taken a very different course. I feel robbed that we didn't get to see that. Palace will feel frustrated. They were not given that opportunity. I know in the context of this game and in the title race, Man City fans won't care one little bit. I just hope you keep that energy (laughs) if it goes in reverse. We should still be calling out poor refereeing, whether it benefits you or not. We've had that conversation all year, really. But I'd love to get your views. I'd love to get your opinions. We've got Hamza and Malak Patrick coming on the show uh, very, very soon indeed. Uh, Why don't you ever put respect on Grealish? If he had a stinker, you would have talked about it. I thought Grealish was good today. I don't think Grealish was outstandingly world-class. He put a cross into the box, which was poorly cleared that led to Rico. Yeah, it was a good cross. I wouldn't look at Jack Grealish today and go, oh, I'm praising KDB's performance was a wow. Wasn't that good as an example? I thought that Akanji, when he came on, was phenomenal. What I saw Foden do a few nights ago was impeccable. I haven't mentioned Grealish because I think he just did okay today. I would I would give him a six and a half, seven out of ten. I'm not going to wax lyrical about a good performance, a good performance. I'm not going to say anything negative about it. It was a good performance. But I'm not going to start talking about it like I praised Foden last week, like I've, like I've praised uh, KDB today, because the level of performance is not even similar, in my view. Uh, stop, uh, Terry, stop crying over it. Listen, I'm not going to stop calling out poor refereeing. It's not crying. I'm not, I'm not accused City of anything. I'm calling out poor refereeing. If you don't like it, then uh, there we go. Terry doing a goal bridge to get a reaction. I- I'm going to be really nasty to you now. Where the fuck have you been all year when I've been calling this out, you dickhead? <laughs> You've got a rise out of me now. I ain't copying no one's flow. Go back and watch the first match reaction of the season to Man United game. I was talking about this exact same thing. Uh, make or break, you're a dickhead, bruv. Simple as that. Simple as that. Uh, comment here says, Terry, uh, how the hell is that not a penalty? Varchester City, by the way, the new show looks great onwards and upwards. Thank you very much indeed. And a few people have said about the new show, I thought you said you were doing it with a really big YouTuber. Th- that's on that channel, but that's not that show. That show's coming. That's in the making. It's going to be a thing of beauty. Uh, if KDB was so good, why did he not Why did he not miss him in two titles? <laughs> it's a great question. Because City also have other great players. And this is where I stand shoulder to shoulder with Manchester City on this argument. Not because I'm defending City and I'm twerking for City, like you say I do with Arsenal. It's because agreeing with this logic, Andrew Wright, diminishes the legacy of Man United players of years gone by. So KDB 
isn't the only reason that Manchester City have won trophies. They've got multiple top quality players. And in this period, they've had the best manager who has adapted his team the best when he's missed particular players. So that's why. That's why, in, in my humble opinion. And I know, I think I know what you're alluding to. Well, like a Gerard stood out in a team that didn't have as many good quality players. Yeah. But would, then would Gerard have stood out if he was in a team surrounded by much better players? The, the actual answer to that question is a yes or a no, but it's a hypothesis. Nobody knows the actual answer. We have no tangible proof to, 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 to conclude an answer from that. But what we know with KDB, we've seen him in multiple teams. And we've seen him get better and him stand out as a star performer, no matter how good the players are around him. That's very difficult to do. But no one is saying City are a one-man team. But that doesn't take away from KDB being one of the best midfield players in Premier League history. Uh, Gabriel did the same thing uh, versus Ivan Tony, Also VVD on Consa. None were given as penalties. Uh, this These time fouls have not been given the refs. But I've called them out. Those are wrong decisions. And the reason they're wrong decisions is, is there's been others like them that have been given. So just because they've made multiple mistakes doesn't make it consistent. The consistency will come when no contact of that level or less is given as a penalty. How can the low fall over, lightly with his shoulder, brush the hip of a player running, and it be a foul, and it's an accident, by the way, versus deliberately getting through the back of someone? If somebody can explain that to me by using the law of the game, not an opinion, the law of the game, then we can have a conversation. Until that point, the inconsistency must be called out. Uh, Arsenal fan, but I think a pen would have been soft. Do you know what, 20? That's your opinion. That's your opinion. And I will totally respect that's your view. I just hope tonight if a Brighton player goes through the back of an Arsenal player, you don't come on here and say we should have had a penalty. I just hope you're consistent when it impacts your team. And by the way, I, I swear City have only no, no City. I think I've lost out in two titles. How many? No, KD. Someone. Said, yeah, yes. It's two, I think it's two or three titles. KDB hasn't won as a City player. Didn't he? Was he at City the year before Guardiola? Which would have meant he's missed out on. If he was here the year before Guardiola, I can't remember if he was or not. That means there's three years that he hasn't won a title at City, um, and two under Pep, I believe. It can't just be one title. What year did he join? I will have to go and check this out now. Oh, why are people making me check this? Why am I checking this? Just hang on a sec. Let's go check when he joined Manchester City. So we signed for Manchester City in the summer of 20... In the summer of 2015, okay? So he's won five Premier Leagues. So 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So that's eight years and he's got five champ Premier Leagues. That means there's been three seasons where he hasn't won it. Who's saying it's one? <laughs> eight minus five is three <laughs> um it's weird so I, no i never claimed to i never claimed to to i did know how long he'd been there i just didn't know the exact i, I knew he'd been in eight premier league uh campaigns with city i thought so i'm only checking it because you guys are saying he's only missed out on one title which would have meant he which meant he joined the year after Pep, and that just didn't sound right to me. So, no, it wasn't that I didn't know. I had to go and double check. There, how is it two? How is it two when he joined in 2015? It can't be two. <laughs> There's three years that he's been at City where he hasn't won the Prem. We're not start. Okay. But, yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, One under Pep. No, two under Pep. It's two under Pep. Pep first season, he didn't win the league. And then, and then the Liverpool year. Where are you? Sorry, where are you guys getting one from? Seriously, where are you getting one? Come on, come on now. Um, I, I'm I'm shocked by that. It's not one. Uh, bringing out the panel now. Patrick's here. Hamza's here. V's here. Uh, Arsenal fan Matt has joined us as well. Welcome back to the show, guys. Uh, Patrick. Uh, important win, especially after going a goal down so early on. Uh, talk to me about the man you wanted on the bench today, KDB. I still stand by it. I, I thought I, I even um, I saw a few uh, City fans because obviously they were watching the show. They were tweeting, but I knew who they were tweeting to. I said I still stand by it. I was like, if you're talking about a team that, let's say, for instance, we're playing a team that we get countered or we get we get uh, attacked in midfield, which today showed. I would have KDB on the bench, let him watch the game, and then come back and change the game. 
Terry, this is what I'm telling City fans. I know there's a lot of sentiment. There's the same thing with uh, uh, David Silva and David Silva was being, was being dropped. This is Foden's team. I'm sorry. There's a point in time you have to pass the mantle. I know that it will hurt people. Yes, KDB can come on and do all this, but let's not pretend as if KDB hasn't been on and hasn't done well. And if you looked at the Crystal Palace game today, let's be honest. As a City fan, sometimes I take my City uh, heart away and I watch it as a football fan. That's why we start with YouTube. Terry, if Crystal Palace were good at finishing, they could have been three goals up. And this is the reason why I say sometimes KDB has to hold the bench. Because if you don't have legs in that midfield, there is no defensive uh, midfielder in there. Like you saw today, Rodri was isolated. So look, KDB did what he did. It is KDB after all. He can do all that stuff. But let's not pretend as if Christopher S were not going through that midfield in the first half as if it's nothing. So it is what it is. But Terry, I know you know this. There's sentiment in, in fan bases. KDB scored. Some of them have flipped around. They're like, oh, what were you saying? What were you saying? It is what it is. I still think in certain games he holds the bench. That's for me. I don't know about the other two, the other two City fans, how they feel about it. Yeah, I mean, guy Hamza, Patrick still stands by what he said. Although, although KDB was excellent today, he's still got to hold the bench more because your midfield leaks too many opportunities. Do, do you agree with Patrick on that? Yeah, I think Pep plays a high line this season, or we've seen Pep playing a high line. And I think we concede because we're taking more risks. But we keep the ball, we outplay teams, and they can sit back and just hit us on the counter. Sometimes I don't know whether it's not taking your opponent seriously. Because I think we came to the game there thinking that we're going to win. But I think when the Palace scored, again, we put a high line there. It depends on the team that you're playing. You're not going to do that against Real Madrid away. There's no way we do, you, you play that kind of football. I think today he showed that that City just... We, yeah, you're right. We conceded goals, which, which we need to stop. But the key thing is winning. Winning Palace away is a very hard place to go. Patrick, I don't know whether you remember, Liverpool went there and... And they struggled and they had to get a man sent off to for them to have Elliot to win. Crystal Palace away is a very hard ground for us to go. And no, that's what even me. Whenever I go and watch them and see they draw or we lose. So I decided I'm not gonna go there today. So I've seen that I get nervous. Palace away is a very <laughs> tough game. Mid midday before Madrid game, he rotated, he played Rico Lewis, he played Oscar Bob, who are absolutely impressive today. Absolutely impressive. So I thought that Pep got it right again. We got that win. Uh, later on, we can talk about De Bruyne, which I've got a lot of things to say about De Bruyne. And, and today, City were absolutely immense. I think to get a 4-2 win, Crystal Palace away, not many teams have done that this season. Not many teams have done that. Away at Marcellus Park is a very hard place to go to. It is very we got hard. three points and a clean sheet. You got three. Well, how much did you beat them? One nil with a penalty. Was One it? nil. It's still exactly. clean. Yeah, it's still we've three gone points. there. We've gone there. We've beaten them comfortably. We should have won four one. We had seventy six percent possession. They did yeah, not we have to touch. We absolutely mullered them. And and for them to have had those two goals, they're very lucky. I'm I'm critical of Palace because I see their neighbours like Brighton, who promoted themselves after two three years after Palace been here, but Brighton have moved ahead of Palace. Palace are still playing the same football back in 20, 2010. Still the same hoof ball and wait yeah. for people to just I'm, make I'm a little things. confused though. You're slagging off their football and slagging them off, but you've also said you've been nervous and scared. No, because of our previous record. Like we've not done when you say your like previous time. previous record. Yeah. They beat they've beaten you. I think they've beaten you twice in the last 10 years what what is his bad record what about what about the draws terry because in a title race it's last we were two nil up we drew against them in eddie had last yeah. year we beat them by one nil the year before that i was in a game we drew nil nil the year before that they had beaten us i was there so i remember it's very yeah, your, record, your, record, your, record's pretty good. your record's pretty good against them though but i understand where, where, where you're where, where you're coming from here but i want to pull on something patrick said and ask the question to you just so i don't want the viewers getting triggered at me it's patrick's point you said they didn't do anything. Patrick's point was, actually, if they'd had their shooting boots on, they could have been 2 or 3-0 up. Does that not concern you as a City fan? They have the, According to Patrick, they have the opportunities to be 2 or 3 up against you. Yeah. 
you're right, but City, City came there, they were on gear one, gear two. We play a high line, you're right, Patrick. But against these small teams, I'm not disrespecting them. They're not good enough. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not disrespecting Yeah, but Hamza, 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 it's not the high line. It's not the high line that I was on about. It's the fact that this season, right, if we mm. talk ball, that's why I'm saying I see a lot of City fans are getting triggered with my De Bruyne thing. That's the mm. thing. That's why sometimes you can't be on YouTube. You have to sometimes remove your City hat and just look at football. If you look at City this season, especially what Christopher were doing to us, they were getting the ball in the middle of the park with our mistakes and they counted us. And mm. let me be honest, if they were very deadly in the final third, they were going to be three goals up. And let's be honest, if you did watch they, football, we saw that straightforward. So it's only Patrick, that it, Yeah, go ahead. Now, did, did they create three open chances? Like they created chances, they chances and fumbled in the in the final third. They created chances. They went through on our goal. The, 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 the reason why it's happening this year, I'll tell you why, is because we need that midfielder that plays with Rodri. Veto will also agree. We need to be back for us. Rodri, Rodri is doing a defensive. He, I've never seen. A, I used to see Vieira and Petit together, Roy Keane and Scores together, Nicky Bat and Roy Keane. I've never seen. A bit fruit that's her saying, yo, I'm doing Roy Keane and Paul Scholes' job. Or I'm doing Vieira and Petit's job. I'm doing Makelele and Lampard's job. Rod is the only guy that I've ever seen doing that. And I'm thinking, we need a guy next to him, you're right. Because he goes forward, but you can't allow him. That's what we need to get that midfielder. Rod is the, Rod is the only person you've ever seen be a box-to-box -box midfielder. That, that does a two-man job. He does what... Roy Keane used to have Paul Scholes next to him. So he would say, Scholes, sit but back. The thing is, this, is where you're being, this is where you're being disingenuous, though. Because I see your team and how you play. Yesterday, like Lewis would join your attack and KDB goes forward. But then what happens is one of your central defenders will step into a midfield role. So the difference is Man United have a system where we leave our six isolated by himself. You have somebody who tucks into that position invariably where you got caught out today was legitimately in the transition where you were pop making a pass and you would be, you were sloppy with the ball. So you were caught out of position, but generally speaking, you do not leave your players in the lurch. And that's why, because you are so good out of possession. So Rodri isn't isolated by himself. You guys have waxed lyrical and rightfully so. And the media have as well about what stones has done by stepping into a midfield role. Now what you're telling us is Rodri Superman because he's all by himself, gets no help and does everything. That is so disingenuous, boys. But it's not true. It's the fact that, look at last year, we had Gundogan sitting there. So Gundogan goes forward, Rodri stays back. Gundogan stays back, Rodri goes forward. Now that Gundogan... You've, you've got that same thing, but all, the, all that's happened is, is you have bought put poorly in the transfer window. Yeah, but who's and the Hang on, the Kovacic, well, today it was Rico Lewis who was in that other role today, and he did a pretty good job at times, but it's because Kovacic and Nunes haven't been good enough. But again, like I just said, I'm only calling out your analysis when you say Rodri's all in there by himself. He's not. Your midfield step up into that area, and we have all sat there as football fans and absolutely congratulated and praised City, and rightfully so, for the way your midfielders step in, step in, your defenders step into midfield and look majestic. You're trying to act now like that isn't going on. Yeah, but it happens, you're right. But guess what happens? So if Rico Lewis steps there, then you see Stones moving forward and Rodri goes. So you're left two. We're left always three against two or four against three all the time because there's not enough body in that midfield, in that midfield part. So, so, you, so you want, do you, do you want Pep to, just Pep's decision then? Do you want Pep to change that? No, I, I think we didn't get the, we were meant to get Bellingham and, or Declan Rice and Paqueta who were going to sit there, but it didn't happen. Now we're working with a depleted squad with a player that we're missing from there. And I'll give you an example, Terry. What's the pleated about City Squad, please? No, no really, though. Uh, uh, Hamza, Hamza, I think I think there's, there's, a, there's a small confusion here. Terry, the thing is, the answer is, is there. It's there. We've seen it in games. If you see tweets, uh, Terry, before when the squad came out, you will find people saying, why are we having Alvarez in midfield again? Why are we doing this in midfield? You will see today, those were the comments. Pep has fixed it this season by putting Kovacic next to Rodri. It, it, it's been fixed before. We get less counters, we get less open. But it's just a profile of, of players sometimes when they're played, especially this, same way as we played against uh, Spurs and Chelsea. When Kovacic, uh, when uh, Alfred is in that midfield, 
he doesn't really do a lot of midfield work. His touch is not very good. He loses the ball a lot in that midfield. Even though John Stones is there, John Stones who just came from injury, is sometimes the setups are not great. But I want you, Terry, to go back and see when Kovacic is in there with Rodri, we have better control and a better Agreed. balance. So it is actually there. It's just that Pep it's, sometimes, you know... I'm, I think, I'm, I'm ask, Patty, I'm asking hmm. these questions because hmm. I, I don't think there's much to criticise about Man City. But I hear, like, I, I just feel with Hamza, and I love you, bro, but I feel like... It's all my, what, what I feel like you're doing, Hamza, is rather than saying the manager's getting it wrong with the team he picks or certain players are not good enough, it's almost it's like you're you're saying something's wrong, but you're not willing to say who's creating it or who's at fault for it being wrong. And someone in the comments here made a really interesting comment. They said, uh, uh, true, Terry, you don't like to pressure Arsenal fans like this. They said this right. If Arsenal fans say things that are contradictory to one another, me as a host, I'll turn around and say, Souls, do you agree with what Agal just said about this? So to say I don't do this on all match reactions again is a blatant lie. It's disingenuous. And all I'm saying is when you make a claim that Rodri's a left isolated and all by himself all the time, I can't sit there and say, yeah, that's true, when we all know that isn't the case. V, well, I mean, you can jump in on this conversation or, or give us your overall breakdown of, of today's game, bro. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll, I'll do both. Um, I think, I think what often gets hung up when what Professor is outlining is that it's happened too often where rodri has been isolated. Like the instances where many rivals and even City fans were saying we're so exposed, we're so leaky defensively, it's been situations where he has been the sole one controlling it in defense and also assisting in attack. So that's left, left us vulnerable in many times, and I think why our record is what it is. What is it, six or seven draws um, and the number of losses that we've had because in instances when he hasn't been there or games where we've resulted in draws, it's because he's been isolated. No Stones playing that role or Walker playing out wide that can't quite do it. in a Kanji early in the season, Pep, not forcing him, but realizing that we can't rely on Stones for the entire season. He was putting a Kanji in that role and it wasn't quite fit, uh, matching up. Now, this game, I have to, I have to give ultimate credit. And first, I'm going to say respect to Crystal Palace. It was not an easy game. You saw how they jumped out at us. Uh, a London team chose to play football, and you can see that they got two goals in terms of playing offensive and defensive. Um, so so it, it, it was a very good match. It was a lot more entertaining than, than the last London match that we had. But I have to give credit to KDB in terms of what Patrick mentioned earlier. Not dropping KDB entirely and saying you're put, you're, you're, you're playing poorly, you're you're, you're delivering stinkers it's a matter of we're trying to pursue this for pete we're still in the fa and we still have champions league we can't have you playing every game kdb and we can't have you playing at that high clip every game so listen take a rest we've seen how foden has been excellent we've we've seen how even adjusting the system a little bit allows him to maybe chill and relax and we had to make do without him because of how injured and recovering from his surgery so I agree. Let's have a lot more rotation moving forward. Let's also continue and let's make sure that we stay within striking distance because there's still a lot to be answered. Can mm -hmm. Arsenal continue to continue to win? Will Liverpool drop points? Let's just let's just keep ticking away, ticking away. Yeah. We're third. We're third overall with the games in hand and everything like that. We're not really expected to be here because no one's expected to win four in a row. So whoa, 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 whoa. I want to make sure I heard that right. Did you just say that nobody expected City to be in the title race? I said no one expected any club to be competing for four. Nobody. It's never been done before. This is unprecedented. This has never been seen. All of this is being witnessed for the first time. We're not supposed to be here mathematically historically we're not supposed to so let's stay in striking distance and let's see who blinks first let's see whether liverpool drop points or arsenal and we move see the problem i have with your your uh, your opinion there you're right if you look at it from the logic three years ago so three years ago you said someone's city so gonna do a four p you'd say no one's ever done it that's a crazy amount of pressure to put upon us the problem you now have is you're the best team in the world Yes, you won a treble last year, but you're still the best team in the world. You have an amazing squad of players. You have one of the most deadliest strikers. You have brilliant defenders, great midfielders. You have the best manager in the world. 
to try and spin that disingenuous Disney line of we're not even meant to be in this title race this season because no one else prior has done a four Pete. That has to be one of the most shameless comments I've ever had on the football terrace V. Well, that that's saying a lot because you've had a lot of people on your panels and to say that's the most shameless everybody in the <laughs> chat, go back and, and pull up the clips of some more shameless ones. But Terry, you you've said this often and I enjoy your channel. Thanks for having me on this league has been around for hundreds, for centuries, over a century. We're talking about a four-peat. So, this so, can ask you, so can I ask you this question? At the beginning yeah. of the season, where did you predict City coming? I back my team every year, Terry. So you're telling me that you back your team. the odds. Hang yes. on a minute, hang on a minute. Yeah. But you did, can you show me the clip of you at the beginning of the season saying we've got no business being in the title race this year, please? I, Terry, I would never talk like that about my club. Never. So why, okay, but you're talking about it now. Mm. I'm talking about the realization, the the factual point of we should not be in striking distance of a four peat. Why we not? Should not because why not? But, the, but do you know what? But, no, but do you know what? That's not unprecedented. Do you want to know why? Yeah, please tell me. Because Man United have done a three peat twice, and in each of the seasons where we didn't go on a four peat, we were in that title race. So where you are now has been done twice in the last thirty years by Man United. So. In the chat, let's see when did United fall off to not win the fourth. I, so if, the, if the fourth it's been, if, hang, if on, it's hang been, on, I'll tell you. Hang on, I'll tell you. So okay. The last one we were in, it was the last day of the season. We missed out by one point on the final day of the season in 2010 to not win it. And in 2002, we finished in that season. We finished third. We finished ten points off. But that was we were still in it with about four or five games to go. Right. So my point is. You are not in uncharted waters. This idea that you shouldn't even be in this title race because so, it's, you're going for a four-peat, that has been done before. And I'm pretty sure, I'd have to go back and check yeah. this, that Liverpool did a three-peat and they were also in the running for a four-peat. When, when is this? You're in the seven in in the seventies, bruv. Like when when before, also, like tr football happened before the Premier League yeah, started. Well, yeah, right? no, we realize that. So, so the point is, that I'm sorry. I've, again, I know the the viewers think I'm going in because it's City. No, it's fine. I I don't think you can sit there and paint this. Underdog mentality. You did a three peat, amazing okay. feat. You did a treble, best treble. club in the world at this moment in time. To say that going into the fourth season, we have no business being in that title race. I'm not going to lie. That is the biggest load of bollocks I've ever heard in my life. Professor, professor, one second, professor, one second, Terry. I think if we're going to continue to do apples to apples, let's look at what strengths or what weaknesses United had going into that fourth that fourth attempt in both instances. Let's look at the surrounding teams and how strong or dominant they were and compare. But so again, for, again, for, again, hold again, on, again, Terry, let me, again, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've got, I want to tackle the you're point. You're cutting me before I even maybe make a more important That's, fact. No, we point. can get to that next point next. We, we, we're no time limits. I want to talk on that point. Okay. Yes, there was very good teams in 2002 and very good teams in 2010. Okay. And there was still very good teams both times. And there's very good teams you're up against now, but none of that negates what you have said saying that you the best team in the world has no business being in this title race because you'd already done a three p is just wrong on every single level so terry i'm the best club in the world i'm not currently the team. best team you are the best team in the world the way the way you and many rivals want to bring up how poorly we bought in the transfer window that still hits us that still impacts us so we're not the same trouble winning team when you guys all remind me of Gunnigan and Mares yes. and how poorly I bought in this season. Okay. So, so when I'm weakened, I'm clear to say, hey, this is not the this is not the trouble winning team. We're doing okay. amazing things, but this is not the same team yeah, of last season. Okay, so right. I could just to round this up, I will say this. You are right. There are some chinks in your armor this year compared to last year. Let's call it a drop off cuz I think you might like that language based on how you're talking. But it is so minimalistic, you're still, in my opinion, the best team in the world. And you want to know why? You're still the majority of people's favorites to win the Prem. You're the favorites to win the you're the favorites to win the Champions League, and you're the favorites to win the FA Cup. Being favorites, and by the way, most city fans I'm always favorites though, Terry. So if you're favorites, okay, how is answer we're not gonna I don't I want, I'm asking this rhetorically. If you're the favorites for everything and you back your team to win everything. You can't possibly sit there and expect us to believe you when you say we have no business being here. 
viewers, give us your thoughts and give us your feelings uh, on what was said there, because that's a mad one to me.